that's it. That's our panel. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Uh, no, please help me welcome the people who are behind this, some people who joined us all this season to make this uh, as fun as it will be. Yeah. First up, please welcome creator, Mr. Derek Letters. <laughs> Next up, co-creator and director, Mr. Jeremy Connor. We had some fantastic narrators this season. First up, Amber Ruffin. Yeah. Joining her, Katie Nolan. Woo. Yes, and finally, yes, yes. Mr. Duncan so Trussell. Yeah. yeah. It's a long walk. It's a long walk. Somebody might go on. We're good? Oh, wait, am I supposed to be sitting in a chair? You sit wherever you want, Jack. <laughs> Is there a more likable person than Jack McBrayer? No offense to anyone here, but <laughs> nobody can compete with Jackie uh, Jack. The night is young, people. The night is young. Let me disappoint you immediately. <laughs> um, all right, so let's just get started. Season five. Uh, we have some great stories. We have great guests who joined us and stuff. Uh, give us some broad strokes about what your vision was for season five. Was it business as usual? Were there uh, challenges this year that you hadn't had in the past? Give us uh, some points. Uh, well, this season, you know, it's a show that you want to find stories that make you go, why weren't we taught that in school? And how do we make that funny? So we took a lot of different uh, chances at that, and we got new narrators, our returning narrators up here, the best, and just getting people to uh, tell stories that we think more people need to know about. Uh, so yeah, the goal was just making really cool themes. We made some changes, like uh, I'm obsessed with a little show called Unsolved Mysteries. Yeah, yeah. Why isn't that at Comic-Con? So we did an episode called Drunk Mystery, which I have to give that title up to Katie Nolan. She pitched that idea a long time ago. And, uh, as a joke. <laughs> as a joke. And I was like, I'm going to use that. She really did. And then, uh, but yeah, I play Robert Stack. And then we have, uh, it's an Unsolved Mysteries parody. Because five seasons, you got to break some rules, you know? And we did a Christmas special that'll be out early fall. And uh, yeah, we're just trying to find... I know that sounded funny, but hey, I don't give the dates when they're going to air. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a brand new season with brand new stories that we're really excited about. Very good. Um, and Jeremy, maybe you can help answer this. When you're coming up with the season, do you come up with the stories first and then try to build a theme around like three stories at a time? Or do you come up with your themes first and then find stories that lend to that theme? I think it's a little... It's a little of both. Um, we knew we wanted a Christmas special. We have a Halloween special. We were really excited about that. Um, and then we built things around that. But then sometimes we just found great stories and we decided we had to build it around. Like we, we do this amazing Gloria Steinem at a, going undercover at the Playboy Mansion, or Playboy Club story. RIP, I guess. Oh, yeah, sorry. sorry. True. We did it before. It's still gonna be funny. It's still, <laughs> it's still gonna be funny. Yeah. Before. Feminism and death. It's like a perfect comedy combination. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Am I doing good? You're doing, You're doing so great. Good. <laughs> you know, that we built an episode around that. We really love that. It's um, got sex. It's a sex episode. Yeah, we are, we're having sex this year. Sex, drunk issue, sex. We also did death, death, sex, Christmas. We got everything season five. Well, we did 40. I will not tune in. So oh, that's geez, Jack. Offensive. This is the most we've ever done. We did 42 stories this season, which is 14 episodes. So there's a lot of history. There's still history to be taught. Um, and we pick stories that, like Duncan's story is probably the, cra I know the craziest story we've ever told. Do you want to give a little brief of uh, your story? Because yeah. we're going to, by the way, Duncan's going to see it as w you guys will for the first time tonight. Oh, no way. Yes, <laughs> the story of Jack Parsons. <laughs> yeah, uh, so... I don't know how many people here are devotees of the great beast, Alistair Crowley. But if, yeah, okay, cool. So then you know the story of Jack Parsons and <laughs> L. Ron Hubbard, which a lot of people don't know, which is that- Wait, is this spoiling what we're gonna show? Yeah. Maybe we show it and then we talk about it. Just give me another it. 20 Sorry. minutes. This is give my me another 20 minutes. <laughs> what is happening? What, is that? what does that mean? 
Uh, oh, right. what does it mean? I didn't hear you ask. Do you really want the answer at a panel at Comic Con? No. The idea. No. Okay. <laughs> It's just an idea that Crowley had that we're about to enter into an age of great bloodshed and that <laughs> out of that blood, a utopia is it's exciting. born. It's exciting. It's <laughs> exciting. Yeah, it's a good time. It's a good time to be alive. We can learn from our lessons. Let's learn. Sex magic didn't work. It works sometimes. Okay. <laughs> I'm here to talk about actors lip syncing. Oh, hi. <laughs> Uh, all right, so you are all drunk narrators this time around, but you have played an actor quite a few times mm -hmm. on the show and stuff. Uh, what do you see uh, helps you when you're being an actor, a reenactor? What are challenges that you have? What have you seen other people do? Like, talk to us about the acting part. Uh, it's like learning a song. Like, just because you know the words doesn't mean you know how the song goes. So listening to how someone talks is more important than what they're actually saying. But it's very hard. Uh, what's your tactic? We listen to it, but just so you know, we have it on playback while we're shooting. It's like a music video. Since there's no sound in our stories, we're playing it over and over again. Like ad nauseum, so you just yeah. hear it a thousand times. All day, times. drunk people <laughs> the yelling. sitting there going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but now, here's one thing that I've learned. Sometimes you'll be working with another actor, and sometimes they just mouth their words without saying stuff. But then sometimes, and this is the way I do it, I just say the words along with You say the it out narrator. loud, yeah. I say it out loud. But that's that was that's more helpful for me. Have that's you seen a choice. I don't I don't, choice. I don't do it because then I won't be able to hear my line. Is that I, true? Yeah, I yeah I lip sync it. Yeah, I'm not as good as you, Jack. It's just nice to hear you say it. <laughs> 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 what everyone's thinking. Um, <laughs> Agreed. Um, all right, so we can talk more about season five, and then we'll turn it over to you with some questions in a moment. But uh, what else? What else can we talk about? Do you have any favorite stories from season five that you'd like to share with us? Jer? I mean, Questlove tells the history of hip-hop. That's pretty cool. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, Scratching. Uh, you want to talk about Evan Who's Rachel it? Wood? Oh, uh, yeah. She, Evan Rachel Wood plays Deborah Sampson, the first woman to take a bullet for America. Pretty which cool. is fucking unbelievable revolutionary Dressed up like order. a dude. She dresses like a man so she could get in under Washington and fight the British. That's unbelievable. Um, this Clara Barton one is... The one that Amber told. With uh, Mandy Moore and Alexander Skarsgård. That's Alexander a true blood. Alexander Skarsgård, isn't it? Yeah, he's the big bearded guy. But what's your story about, Amber? Thank you for asking. <laughs> My story is about uh, Clara Barton and how she helped uh, bring supplies to the Union Army. Um, but also she ended up uh, founding the first Red Cross in America. Um, and that's, I think, how people know her, is because she's the founder of the first American Red Cross, but not before she saved America. Touche. And love sex magic. <laughs> Who doesn't? I don't. People love magic. People love sex. Put them together. Mwah! <laughs> Bellissimo. Yeah. Um, what about? There's a story, uh, and I don't remember the ins and outs. The American Disability Act. Or? Oh yeah, uh, Section 504. 504. You want to oh, talk about it? Yeah. Yeah, we do the Section 504 sit-in, which is a uh, pretty much unknown story of the Amer uh, sort of the first real disability protest in America. Uh, or in the world, really, and they sat in in San Francisco and ended up sitting in for 28 days, 150 people with disabilities, uh, until they got the law signed and the bill was passed and, like, the ADA was sort of started and Braille and it's ramps. Braille, and, ramps. Yeah, it was like everything came out of this incredible, sort of amazing, like, Woodstock sit-in that they did where everyone was like, Partying and Jefferson Airplane came by. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but it was exciting as we had all disabled actors in, in that story. It was really, because you can do stories about Jack Parsons and then you can do stories about that. Like, as long as there's a mix between the two, <laughs> you know, <laughs> important and ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. I love you. Me? You, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. love you, Derek. Yeah. <laughs> Derek just let me stay at his house. That's for true. Three days. Is that true? That yeah. Is true. Uh, he had to recover from Burning Man. Oh yeah, that's right. 
called it the bur Burning Man and Women Recovery System. Yep. It's cool. You need it. And Derek is the perfect person because he knows how to heal drunk people. So when we came there, there was just a drawer full of those charcoal pills for me to theoretically eat to clean out yeah. all the tea I drank there. <laughs> <laughs> you are a broken person, don't you? What the hell are you talking <laughs> about? What, because I drink tea and go to Burning Man? <laughs> I think that makes me a fixed person, you fascist. <laughs> Would all three of you do it again? Would you tell another story yes. if we do another season? Yes? Yeah. You yeah. can say no. For okay. Sure. I want you all to be back. Oh, you got cut off? They well, thought it was Duncan. Yeah, they thought it was Duncan. <laughs> um, Wait. Well, and just a, again, just before we turn it over. Just time for it to be over. over. Thank you so much. I want to reach out to the narrators, and just because some of these people may not know, tell us the logistics of what goes into you telling your story. Uh, do you have input for your story? How, what kind of research do you do for your story? How many times do you have to tell the story? Give us a little play-by-play uh, -play of what happens on the eve. Wants to go. Me? Okay. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so we, uh, Derek asked me if I had anything I wanted to tell the first season. And then this, well, not first season, but the first time I did it. And then the second time, he was like, I have the story that I want you to do. It's about Gloria Steinem. She went undercover as a Playboy bunny and exposed uh, the Playboy clubs. And so I get from them, like, a bunch of research. But then, because I'm a crazy person, I do, like, extra and, like, above and beyond. So if you have any questions about Gloria Steinem, just, like, let me know. Uh, <laughs> And so I like over obsessed over it. And then so the night before, or maybe it was a couple days before, I drank a lot, not just on TV, um, so I don't really remember. But you tell the story um, to a producer and then they'll give you notes of like, okay, on this part maybe do a little bit more dialogue or a little bit more like, what are those two characters saying to each other in that situation instead of just the way you would tell your friend. Uh, and so that helps a little bit. And then the day of, you get fucked up <laughs> and then you tell the story like four times, unless you're me, and you know too much about the story and you want to get every detail right, and you really only get through it like once. <laughs> and then they're like, okay, just go back and do this one part again, because we have to let you go, because it's like three in the morning. <laughs> that was my experience. Well, you got it, you yeah. got it. Thank you. <laughs> is, that, is that kind of the norm? Amber, was that the same for you? Yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. So we women will women. not be silenced. <laughs> Hey, woo. Yeah, motherfuckers! Take off your bra! <laughs> oh, I, I'm not gonna ever take off my bra. Um, <laughs> no, we do. We tell the story a couple of times, and it is, you you are so fucking shit faced. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. It's not gonna do you no good. Um, that you are certain that you're. <laughs> You like you tell you say a line and you go, oh, am I fucking up? <laughs> and you say another couple of lines, you go, oh, this is a mess. I'm so sorry. Then you say a couple more, and you just kind of apologize your way through it. I bet everybody is like I that. I have heard that yeah. apologies are. What happened? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, a new mic. A new mic. You scared me. <laughs> uh, I, I hear that uh, apologizing happens so much, like the day after. <laughs> the day after, there's uh, an email that is, is, is just a standard email. It says, I'm so sorry we didn't get the story. I, <laughs> I, I'm happy to do it again. And that's, uh, that, that's the moral of don't drink alcohol to excess, because it makes you feel bad. Or uh, do. Or do and feel bad. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's an apology, but uh, we make sure everyone's OK. Yeah. You're always in good hands. There's a doctor there. There is a important. medic. Yeah. The doctor comes in and like makes sure you don't. Which made me more scared. Cause I was like, oh, this is this is real. <laughs> no, you. Well, you also time. had a medic that was 300 pounds the first time, which was very. <laughs> was that this time or last time? The first time. He, was he recommended large. me to smoke cigars instead of cigarettes. That was his medical advice. <laughs> 
big fresh He asked me if I could turn the air down in the apartment because it was too hot. I was like, it is 70 degrees in here. <laughs> but normally we have great medics. But we, we have to medics. sign a contract yeah. that says we know we might die. That's part of <laughs> I what I wouldn't say not. die. Yeah, well, we expire or whatever. Like you have to you have <laughs> fade away. There that you, you, you know this, you're poisoning yourself and oh, you could die. And that's a caveat for me. I would do it again, but please stop making me get a blood test. I know. I hate, I hate it. Tests, but oh, yeah, you got to go to this doctor. Oh, yeah. It's the worst in Glendale. He's awesome. I'm sure you're healthy. But I, I have a Before. fear of doctors. Oh, it's, it's spooky. Just, it's on the up and up. It's really good, but I'm afraid of needles. And every time I'm like, is it worth it? And it is because it get, it's really fun. I love it because otherwise I would never go to the doctor. That's true. <laughs> That's true. That's <laughs> true. No shit. <laughs> yeah, you try, try to get him to diagnose me, prescribe Xanax. He won't. But... <laughs> One thing that's interesting is like they take our blood, but they don't really use our blood. When I was staying at Derek's house after Burning Man, I was going through his shit, and there's a drawer filled with blood <laughs> with the names of all the comics. Mm -hmm. What are you mm -hmm. doing with those, man? I'm gonna create the best comic with all your blood. <laughs> all the blood will okay, create. Awesome. <laughs> It'd be so cute. Oh God, <laughs> this is a nightmare. Um, <laughs> All right, so how many episodes do we have for season five? 14. 14 episodes. Yeah. It'll be coming yeah. out early 2018. Yeah, we'll have the Christmas one, and then early 2018 Fantastic. they'll be out. Yeah. Very good. Uh, before I turn it over to the audience, is there anything I haven't hit? Anything y'all care to share? Any memorable things? Any... I just want to make sure everybody saw that Derek cried. <laughs> he cried. I did cry. That's yeah. important. How, what is the percentage of people that cry? Oh... Uh, 100% of the hosts, as in 100% you. of me, yeah, I cry at the end. No, I, I don't think that much. No, yelling, yelling and apologizing is 100%, but crying is rare. That's when it gets too dark. And I go, okay, let's take a break. Yeah, let's not cry. Was, There's nothing funny about people crying. Except if it's me uh, doing it to you. Then it's like, oh, yeah. And what Puking is kind of like crying. I was going to say, I mean, you're getting your something. your mouth crying food. Shut yeah. up. Duncan, <laughs> that is What's not What's the percentage of pukers? Yeah, what is the percentage of pukers? Uh, I don't know, because it's we don't film it anymore. It's, it happens the next day, yeah. I, I, w I would safely say, not that much. I would say 40%, maybe. That's, That's a, a lot. lot. That's a lot. That is a lot. It's, it's a lot. not that much. Has anyone ever gotten so drunk that you couldn't use it? Mm -hmm. Yeah? A lot of times, yeah. <laughs> Is that true? Mm hmm And then so what do you do? Just it's nick that, that story? Or? Sorry, it just, the story didn't work. The oh. cameras didn't work. No. Um, <laughs> we, we, we've refilmed some that gotcha. people got too drunk. But I learned a rule, don't, like, drink before I get there because adrenaline and alcohol don't mix. You know, uh, when you went to see Candlebox, your favorite band, and you were drinking before Candlebox started, you were so excited to see Candlebox, and then they open with uh, Far Behind, very deep reference. And then you, you fall far behind Don't touch me. because you've been drinking too much. <laughs> Don't drink when you're really excited for something because your brain can't calculate how drunk you're getting. That is it's true. a fun I, fact. Well, I don't think we're throwing anybody under the bus. I think it was like season one, Rich Fulcher, I guess, didn't understand the rules. He was one of the drunk narrators. So yeah. he thought you're supposed to just drink before it started. So when they get to filming them, it was a mess to the point where the editors had to do syllable by syllable to make him form sentences. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is and very it, true. And it ended up being okay. It turned but out. But if you just saw the raw footage, you'd be like, eh, bro, eh, eh. <laughs> Dot, dot, leap, heart. <laughs> yep, yep, that was the Lincoln lawyer, yep. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, all right, you want to open it up? Yep, uh, I think it is time for question and answer, so I guess it's this microphone here. Um, Thank you all for sticking around. I know, we really appreciate all of y'all turning out uh, and not being allowed to leave after the Trump one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, yes, sir, what can, you, what can we help you with? Hi, so first of all, thank you for being here with us in New York this weekend. I've been uh, watching uh, Drunk History since it was on like Funny or Die like years ago, so Woo! super cool to finally say hello to you in person. Thanks. Thanks. Um, my question is, with a show like this, have you gotten into any uh, interesting uh, fights with standards and practices over any of the stories or anything like that? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, no. No, uh, just where to put bleeps. Um, We've gotten a lot of 
concern about stuff, but in the end, it's fair use. It's like a really interesting, weird loophole with, you can sort of talk about anything. Do you have viewers write in complaints or anything? Mm-mm. That's about to change. <laughs> Jeez. All my Twitter followers. <laughs> and Derek, just real, real quick, I want to know, who is one storyteller that you're dying to have on the show that you haven't quite gotten yet? Mm, that's a really good question. Maybe Ken Burns. That would be cool. <laughs> yeah. Him and Eddie Vedder. Those are my two top favorites. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Wow, that guy's great. I, I've seen him do the, the questions before the, with, uh, with President Trump and, and really composed and uh, wow, <laughs> professional. My question is, how do those charcoal pills work? Because that sounds amazing. I, need, I, just, right. I just came back from Miami uh, uh -huh. la last week. I landed last week on Sunday and I still hurt. So I'm it, not a doctor, <laughs> first and foremost, but uh, charcoal absorbs the alcohol from what I've learned and you take it with these electrolytes and uh, I've never been hung over since. So, okay, so that, Don't that was, do it. That was Don't start. That was a follow-up question. Is it, is it for hangovers or is it like kind of... Well you... for this, you know, if you're making a TV show where people get drank, you do it before you start drinking and after. If you're going to a wedding, it's a great idea. Unless you're getting married. <laughs> yeah. That's a great dad joke. <laughs> Hey, my Hi. question is, and I've wondered this since the show started, how do you decide who the narrators are going to be? Great question. Mm -hmm. um, well, kind of like our stories, you know, finding stories that you're like, oh, why don't more people know about it? I feel the same way about my friends and people that I'm a fan of. Amber Ruffin and I have known each other for a long time, but, you know, a lot of people know her now from Seth Meyers as a writer-performer, but when we first met, she's amazing. I was like, why don't more people know about Amber? And the same with everyone up here, just that, like I feel like we have two jobs, like, you know, find stories and people that we want more people to know about. I'm going to be a dick and ask a second question. Sure, don't be what a dick. What are the chances of those next day apology emails being published? Mm. <laughs> I'm going to say, please don't. I think don't. that's a good, if we do like a coffee book, a coffee table book, we won't put the names. It won't be signed. Yeah. I'll send them all, Duncan. <laughs> Thank you for your questions. Oh, look at your outfit. Who are you? That looks awesome. Okay. Oh, Jaws. Sorry. Um, oh, no? No, George. It, the it. baby from It. Yes. Did the little brother. Jaws? Oh, I haven't seen it. Jaws well, was it like Jaws happened. <laughs> <laughs> so was It, the Ridge. True. Okay. Um, for the narrators, who would be your dream person to reenact your story? I want Taron Killam in everything I do. He's so good at it, and he's so funny. Uh, or like... Bobby Moynihan, probably, he's also fantastic. Uh, those two. Daniel Day. <laughs> <laughs> Pull him out of retirement, get him out of his Italian craft shop where he's making furniture and just, that'll be his last thing. I would have said Alexander Skarsgård, but fuck. You got him. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, uh, is there any way after this I could take a picture of you, Derek? Of course, of course, I won't leave. That's it, that's the question. That's a great question. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm a history major and I love the show and I'm really excited about the Aleister Crowley thing. I think more people should know about it. Um, on that note, uh, have you ever thought about doing like a conspiracy theory episode where it's all like things that are, might not be history but might could have happened? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people say like, why don't you do JFK and I think that alcohol is a great combination for truth, you know, to mix it up. If we ever were to do something with uh, stoned, theories would work great. That's why I always say, like, yeah. no, I don't want to, you're going to smoke weed. It's not going to be a true story. It's going to be a theory, and it's all going to be about the narrator. So I thought, maybe. I thought you were saying Oliver Stone for JFK. Oh. And I'm like, that's a deep cut, but sure. You know yeah, this is streaming, right? Streaming what? This is all being streamed. Like uh, that yeah. joke is forever streamed. That wasn't a joke. <laughs> no, you thought of <laughs> Oliver Stoned. Maybe get Oliver Stone stoned. Ugh, I don't want to be here. <laughs> you know, the drunk mystery episode that we have is the closest to what you're talking about that we've ever done. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, D.B. Cooper's in there. Yeah. 
And yeah. since I give you titles for things, I can just throw one out. If you want to call that the like the smoking weed and doing the smoke and mirrors, I think that's what you should call that. Whoa. That's great. I'm Katie Nolan, ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Derek, who do you think shot JFK? Allegedly shot. <laughs> Jack thinks he's still alive. Hi. Hello, I'm Patrick. Um, now, when you are about to go into telling a story and you have a specific story you want to tell, do you decide on what type of drink? Like, if you say, like, you want a serious story, you go with Jack and Daniels, or if you want a funny story, you go with tequila, or you just go get whatever drinks on hand. Uh, I asked, we asked an narrator, what's a drink that you've never had a bad experience with? Yeah. But in the little that you, no, you did not ask me You didn't me ask that. me that. <laughs> you asked me what I like to drink. <laughs> What did I say? You, you said, you, what do you like to drink? Yeah, That's what you get whatever yeah. you want What do you like to drink? You yeah, but like not, that I've never, only... not that I've never had a bad experience with. I always have a bad experience on <laughs> bourbon. I just keep drinking. <laughs> yeah, it works for the show. No, we both had Bullet. I remember that. A whole bottle. A whole bottle Between of Bullet. The two of us. Yeah. Well, That's a gunshot. Uh, and can you try and get Morgan Freeman? I'll That'd try. I'll try. <laughs> yeah, just so people can move their lips to Morgan Freeman. That would be awesome. But in short... <laughs> Beer makes you talk about things that don't matter. Wine makes you fall asleep. And uh, whiskey makes you sound really important. That's what I've learned. Hey. Porn stuff. Yeah. Or porn hubs. Oh. Yes, I'm trying to get a job with them. So uh, I just want to say, Amber, you're one of my heroes. Uh, your segments on the Seth Meyers show is awesome. I have played at work all the time to oh, annoy. Oh, thank you, that's yeah, great. To annoy the people I work with, because they are not nice people. Fuck them. Yeah. You're the best, you're my hero. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, but um, also, um, is there a, who got drunk the fastest when you were filming of any celebrity or comedian ever? Who got drunk the absolute fastest? Oh, yeah. Uh, Natasha Legero, she's one of our favorites. <laughs> and she did the thing that I was talking about earlier of getting drunk before we got there. Oh. And uh, she was doing the story of Patty Hearst, and she, once it was time to film, she couldn't say Patty. And then she went to the restroom and came back in a bathing suit and said, I think it'd be funny if I did it in the bathtub. And there's a fine line between funny and sad. But, and then so. she, she went to the bath and then grabbed a big thing of bath soap and was pouring it into the bathtub and just kept pouring like a whole bottle of bath soap in and then got in. And then we realized that it was actually just moisturizer that she was... <laughs> And it was like a whole thing, and she was just covered it. It was so gross. So we were like, we should just do this again. We'll yeah. just come yeah. back with another one. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hi. Um, I'm a history major as well, and I'm a huge fan of this show. Um, my sister is too, and she's going to be super jealous that she isn't here. But anyway, um, I wanted to know, like, for, this is a question for all of you. Um, what was the most interesting story that you heard? Like, were, were there any where you guys were like, holy shit, that was... Really we give here. the short version of Claudette Colvin, is I think that. Yeah, Claudette Colvin is uh, the woman who originally got arrested for sitting on the back of the bus, um, and uh, fourteen. When she was fourteen, but she was fourteen, um, had dark skin and was pregnant. So they were like, let's do this exact thing again, except with a light-skinned black woman yeah. um, who is, you know, uh, respectable in some way. And uh, the NAACP just fucking reenacted the whole thing. And that's why Rosa Parks is Rosa Parks. Um, they did that shit on purpose. Yeah. So, the, yeah, that, that's definitely my favorite. Yeah. Me too. Uh, and she's still alive, Claudette. Uh, one more other question. Can I get a picture with Derek? After of course. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Damn, 30 Derek. Rock used to be a TV show. 30 too. Rock <laughs> used to be on. Used to be on. So at this point, now that you're in your fifth season, do the narrators come to you and pitch something of history they want to talk about, or do you approach them with an idea? You may have. Uh, it's, it's off and on. We have okay. researchers that find us stories, uh, and then, but I, I always talk to a narrator, what's the type of story you want to tell this season? And because it's a TV show, we can't just be like, oh, you can talk about whatever you want. We have to find 
the three stories that fit the theme. Like Duncan's, that episode's called Dangerous Minds, and it's Rasputin, Dangerous Mind, Jack Parsons, Very Dangerous Mind, and uh, I forget the next one. There's a lot of stories. But finding out the tone of what the narrator wants to say. I think you already knew Jack Parsons. Yeah, I knew, I tweeted. Oh, check please. I, uh, I pitched uh, two to you, because I knew Jack Parsons, and then also uh, Genghis Khan. Well, we were, but that one was like hard to, to give him the about. bad news, Jeremy. We we did that. You did Genghis Khan. Sorry, we do have we have a Middle Ages episode this year. That's great. No, it's yeah. great. I couldn't figure out a uh, way to compress it all into. How'd you make that I'm uh, funny? Uh, it's so <laughs> impossible. It's it was yeah. almost. It's impossible. big, it's right? Impossible. It's a big story. We told just the sort of it's the, the creation Genghis. of Genghis. Yeah, the, the one where he's like eating rats. No. That. <laughs> well, you now have 280 characters on Twitter. Hey, now. What's that? What happened? You have 280 characters on Twitter. You can get it out there, I think. Thank you. Not yet. Oh, that, right. And that, yeah. one yes. last question. Is there any cocktail or type of liquor that you just would really prefer not to drink whenever you do a segment, now mm. that you're five seasons in? I don't like tequila, and uh, the first time I threw up was from Mad Dog 2020. Oh my God. If that, if that still exists, I don't want that. <laughs> Not to date myself. <laughs> oh, hello. 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 You look so lovely. Yeah, thank you. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chim -chim I've been waiting to say that all day. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, so I've been watching uh, Drunk History from the beginning. I really love the show. And um, I've been going through like withdrawals, waiting for the new season. So I tried watching the British version, and mm -hmm. it's very different. It's not as funny. It did not help. But I wanted to know what you guys like thought, and like how do you compare yourselves to the British version? Did also, you dress like, like Mary Poppins to talk just, about the British no. version? <laughs> that was a coincidence. But I also want to know like something they do that you don't do is you list the drinks of how many like how many drinks the person has and what the drink is and I thought that was very interesting so I wonder why you guys don't. The do reason that. why we didn't do it, uh, we did it when it first started, where you know Duncan Trussell drank a bottle of absinthe mm -hmm. and a six pack of beer. We felt like you needed to know that <laughs> learning about Tesla versus Edison. And, but now that there's three That's the stories, thing, like, you certainly weren't like, what drink is safest well, for no, you, Well, no, I was Duncan? trying to... Uh, no. Otherwise, you'd never be like, yeah, drink half a bottle of absinthe. You wouldn't be hovering in front of me like the devil. Like, have another <laughs> sip. Take another drink of absinthe. One of the most potent hallucinogenic alcohols. It's basically like vampire tequila. Whose idea? <laughs> Whose idea? Whose idea was the absinthe? Mine. <laughs> The reason why uh, we try to do it, but it feels like you have to start the show over again when you see that title. And I also don't like uh, making it feel like a competition, like, oh, he got drunker than her, she got drunker than him. Like, I like to just be like, just enjoy the story. Gotcha. Um, but uh, yeah, the, you, you know, um, people have, you know, there's cover songs to every original. So that's the UK's interpretation, but we make our own. I humbly say I'm proud that the American version is more subtle. I That's like all I'll say. Thank you so much. Usually it's the opposite. Thank you, Mary. Chim Chimity, Chim Chimity. Uh, I'm uh, Ryan. Uh, me and my wife, we love the show. Thanks. We watch it from the beginning. Uh, Duncan, you're the best. I'll take Thanks. a picture with you if you let me. Ah, it'd be an honor. Yeah. Forgetting Sarah Marshall was a great man. <laughs> you were in Forgetting Sarah Marshall? I'll get you, man. I'll get you, Jack. I'm gonna do a little sex magic on you later. Shut up. <laughs> when uh, we show our friends the show to get them involved in everything, the, mm. our favorite uh, story was the Lewis and Clark. Mm. Any, uh, any chance that you'll be able to get those ladies back on to do another story? Uh, one of the ladies, Georgia, told a story in the Drunk Mystery episode uh, this season, because now she has her My Favorite Murder. Isn't that the name? Yeah. So yeah, she tells a story about the Circleville letter uh, writer. That's a really cool mystery. So it's very hard with two people. It's very hard. We were very lucky with that story that they talked over each other in the perfect amount of time, but we're open for doing that. You should also know that same night in the first season, we used to do two narrators a night, uh, besides them, that would have been three, but 
two different places at night telling two stories, and they told that story and the Dahmer party. The Dahmer party will never air. <laughs> <laughs> Eating people sad. <laughs> Gotta eat. Are you saying the Dahmer party or the Dahmer? Jeffrey party? Dahmer's family had a party. Oh. That's a whole story about it, you dick. Sorry, penis. Sorry, buddy. Sorry. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm Bernie. Um, I just want to say, Amber, I love you so much. I mm. saw you one time at UCB, and I got so excited that you stepped in at one point. I was, like, crying inside. Um, Wreck-It Ralph 2? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Let me get to it, let me get to it, let me get to it. Um, I'm getting to it, I promise, I promise I get, I'm getting to it. Um, one, any advice for comedy writers, especially from the woman, and two, Jack, I love you on 30 Rock. This isn't a pity. Please come back. back, come back. Come back. If I could please get a picture with you, I think my life would be made. Aww. No, thanks. <laughs> um, uh, my advice for uh, comedy writers is uh, to um, usually people, I shouldn't say usually, but sometimes people are like, yeah, I'm a good comedy writer. I write, I, I can write comedy and I'm, I'm great at it, but there is no pile of work they can point to and say, here's why I'm telling the truth because of this. But all you need to do is, you know, write an ass load so that you have a bunch of work to point to, but also like go ahead and make shitty videos. Man, I have some garbage videos on YouTube. <laughs> and people, and we, I have, maybe me and my friends made 10, and two of them were not terrible, and I got work from one of them. So fucking eight, pieces of hot shit and no one cares no your bad work no one cares about and it never i shouldn't say never but it has never come back to bite me and i've put some shit out there thank you so much That's thank you great advice. Right. and i think this is our last question yes. so welcome back still the last one so i had a question you said that you op you pick your narrators by people that you think the world should know about do you do the same thing as someone who's trying to break into the film world for people who are trying to get in? Do you hire sort of unknowns for your productions, like PAs or whatever else? Our PAs are, this is a very pressure question, but <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how to, I mean, I don't go to the PAs like, did you just move out here? But, <laughs> no, I'm being honest, but um, yeah, I, I, I'm from Baltimore. I've been trying to do this for 17 years. I didn't know anybody. And I, I know what it feels like when someone gives you a gift. So the least I can do is give people a gift of like, you love this world, be in this world. And if it's for you, you'll know it. And if it's not, you'll know it too. So it's just about giving people opportunities all the way around. The medic he hired for my first shoot had never been a doctor before. So it was like totally- It was his dream. Make a wish foundation. Really, really nice. Uh, all right, you guys, I think that is- Thank you guys very much. Duncan Thank Trussell, you. Katie Nolan, Amber Ruffin, Jeremy Connor, and Derek Waters. Jack McBrayer. Jack McBrayer from 30 Rock.